So, uh, now we start a beautiful process called coloring. My name is Omar Dogan. I've been working with Udon since the beginning, so for quite, quite a long time. About 10 years now, according to the recording of this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and color this page, but we're going to do it in certain steps. So I broke down the uh, the sets or the chapters in such a way that you can see it stage by stage, obviously, and then get a gain a better understanding as to how I go about uh, keeping things clean and going about coloring them. So this one we're going to call uh, separating the characters from the background. So why do we do this? Well. First, uh, what I'm going to do, if you see it on the side here, and you should, uh, I have some of my, I already went ahead and drew some of the panel separations through the boxes and just the crop line here as well too. I'll zoom on in so you can see. So I have the crop line, or I have the panels there on a different layer and the general outline of the page. So I don't know, I'll just combine those ones. When I combine, usually I used to use my pen and right click on it and uh, just merge layers. So now it's all on one layer, nice and easy. So now the reason why we go about doing that and separating two of the th separating the characters from the background is so that when we do color the characters and if we do want to change things wholesale, uh, we can do it without affecting the background. So what I did is I just copied it now. So I have two layers, the same, exactly the same. So the tip, the method I go in and do is that I discern first which and what is going to be considered a character. Now, a few ways I do it, of the ways that I do it, uh, sometimes I have cars as characters where I'm going to have the cars um, and be cell shaded. That is sort of the typical animation technique where anything that's moving or an in movement or a prop, for example, all those things are considered um, animated features. So as a result, they're shaded like cells. That's sort of the more typical uh, way. But in this case, because there is such a small amount of background, I am actually going to go in and uh, do all of the uh, cars. I'm actually going to render all the cars. So right now I'm just going in and just uh, just blocking out things. Now you can hit L for the um, lasso tool and you can hit alt backspace and it'll fill it in the color that you've picked here up at the top we've picked white. Now this is a grayscale right now so we haven't actually gone in and changed it to color. That's because the file size is like smaller so it's easier to work uh, quicker if your computer is not like super bonkers fast which is the majority of the population. Alt backspace get rid of that. So what I'm doing right now, and actually I should be a little bit more careful, I'm going to turn anti-aliasing on on the mask so that we get a nice sort of smooth line as opposed to that jittery line. And I'll zoom in right after I do this lasso tool and show you what I mean. That anti-aliasing and non-anti-aliasing is useful. See this jit jittery line here? See how it's all very um, angular 8-bit graphics? one bit graphic, either black or white, that's useful for when we do um, our flats, our separation for the colors. But for now, we want it to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more soft, and you'll see why. So control D gets rid of the, control D gets rid of the mask. So now I'm going in just with a brush tool and just with no, with no dynamics on the brush whatsoever. And this is CS4 too. This is CS4 too. This is CS4 just so that you know as well. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, in this process, you know, you'll find that your, you know, some of your character lines are not properly connected and you'll find gaps as well too. So that sort of thing you can iron out as you go along. Now, another way if you aren't so brave as this, what you can do is put another layer on top, which I should do, and just do it as white. Like put all your white on one layer on top. That way if, say for example, you screw up, like say you're cutting out this girl here, and you go whoops, you know, like that, and you mess up, it's not to panic. Yes, you can hit undo, but another thing you can do as well too, is that you can just, uh, say you don't want to undo all of it, you can just erase back the stroke like that. So that's the benefit of having the, you know, the white on one layer, 
and then uh, when you're happy with it you merge both the things together and you'll see what I mean so right now we're doing this and uh, it's it's tedious there's just there's just no way around it it is tedious uh, for the things if I want like a generally straight line or a more controlled line what I'll do is I'll hold down shift so I'll go in and uh, you know hold down shift so for example see this sharp angle here what I'll do is I'll purposefully go over over the boundary on one side and then just take an eraser and go back over on the other side like that so to sort of get that sharp angle and that saves time now we're doing it as white uh, and you'll see why we're doing that what will happen is that once I get rid of all these background elements uh, meaning the cars and any any like existing background once we get rid of all that stuff uh, we can go in and start really uh, tweaking the lines and make the lines a lot sharper the reason why we want to do that is because if we know that we're going to be basically painting the um, the vehicles and you know we're not going to need as strong a line for them make sure you save actually let's let's save it let's call this uh, I'll save it in versions so I'll do this as well I'll save it as fine it's good enough make sure compatibility is on all right so we're just motoring along but if you um, when you do this if you want a painted look obviously you don't want to have those lines to be so strong and so uh, so clear but for the characters usually when things are cell shaded which is what we're going to do for these characters uh, when it's cell shaded you want these lines to be um, more stronger more stronger you want the lines to be stronger clearer and crisp so that it's easy to discern what exactly is going on and then by separating these things by separating the the you know like the car seats here in this example right now you know you're going to be able to seclude and work on the characters without affecting the car seats so it's a bit tedious it is tedious no one said it's easy there's no you don't press C for color or whatever and you know you just you just have to do it there's just no way around it now obviously another method would be just oh you know well why don't we just take the line art turn the line art to multiply and just color all the line art or I'm sorry color under the line art with the line art on a multiply which you can do but that's not going to uh, necessarily always give us the results we want and the other thing is that when you sort of do that method you pigeonhole yourself that if you really want to change something you know you can't whereas here if I for example we get to the stage where we color the characters and I say you know what the characters right now they aren't um, they aren't red enough they need more saturation I can go in and do that easily because they're all on a separate layer and easily uh, yeah, I can get to them quite easy and change things real fast so I'm just doing this do, 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 do. So let's do that. There's going to be something now. I drew this thing um, uh, in ink, and I, you know, I I do this all on uh, paper because I believe like firmly in like maintaining that traditional thing. There's more skill involved, no matter what anybody tells you. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, at least the way I see it, you know, some people say that well, you know, computer is a tool, and drawing with the computer is fine and stuff, but the fact is that if you mess something up on a real piece of paper you know that eraser is is the only sort of undo button you've got now to say that the undo eraser or the undo button is the same as an eraser is a, is a uh, misnomer it's a false statement the reason why is because never once have I ever seen my eraser redraw anything for me and if it did I'd have to give it partial credit because realistically it, it did redraw it and if it can redraw whatever I drew then it must be as good an artist as me so the fact is is that there, no matter what you say there's just no comparison between drawing it on paper and drawing it on computer there's too many there's too many ways to cheat on computer and undo button is just it's so easy to abuse but you know everybody's got their own thing have their own opinion as far as using it, 
Well, the thing is, is that everything nowadays has to, you know, eventually go into a digital format. So, you know, usually you can't scan things uh, with a high degree of accuracy all the time. You know, the most accurate way you're going to get it is by, you know, actually coloring it on computer. So, I have to color it on computer. But I can color with markers and all that sort of stuff too. And that's, I did some of the rendering, just the basic rendering here. I did do some of it, um, you know, on the actual page, like the darks here and stuff like that. That's because I want it to have that uh, appeal that it's actually, you know, drawn because it is. And you know, a lot of, a lot of people go to great extent to uh, create like an artificial texture on their artwork because it is done on computer, but you know, like they say, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Seriously. So this is real texture because it's really, really on a piece of paper. So that's my take on that. Some people can call me old-fashioned, but, you know, I, I feel like uh, this is preserving an art. So with those things come limitations as well, too, obviously. So right now we're, you know, showing those limitations, so I have to go in and manually separate all of it. So, but it's not it's not that bad. We're not doing too bad right now, time-wise. How much time we've spent? Ten minutes. That's not bad. We're almost done, too. Save it. Save it. Now, when I'm separating this thing, I am sort of leaving some bit of the lines as well, too. In other words... Even though, see, like, for example, this towel or this rag that's under her leg, uh, yes, that's going to be part of the background, but, you know, if you've ever worked in animation, you'll, there's something they used to call uh, match lines, where the background matches up to exactly where the cell is supposed to take, uh, take over, like, I mean, where it, it actually transitions over. So I'm sort of doing that right now, too, because it's helpful for me knowing where, uh, where this is going to stop and that line is a really good um, like breaking point so we just do that there we go zoom out see now the other thing is that since I've done most of the um, most of the shade on the background since I've done most of it on the page that's like a whole bunch of things that I don't really have to do so it's it's like what I always tell my students it's like either oops either you do it on the page or you do it on the computer one or the other you're gonna you're gonna be spending the time somewhere I mean if you want it to look decent it's gonna take time that's just the way it goes so like I said in this chapter what we're doing is we're trying to get rid of separate all the characters from the background and then we can go in and make those lines darker and nicer and you know, more more crisp without necessarily doing that to the uh, the background lines. So we don't want to do that, and they don't always translate well. Like if I just did a brightness contrast adjustment on the lines, a lot of this background texture would just go black and just be totally lost. So there's different levels of uh, sensitivity. You know, when you scan things in, there's going to be different levels of sensitivity you have to try and accommodate for. And part of the way you can do that is by having everything uh, nicely uh, separated. So, I don't know, there's just something nice about like drawing it like right in front of you. I mean, I started like doing that a long time ago. I always drew it, drew it on paper. When I started drawing, like we didn't have like computers that were competent enough to work on and like color. So all our colors we used to do on paper, all that stuff, not, you know, it was later on like in my career, like, or I mean, like right in the beginning of my career, I started using computers before. Everything before that point was marker, pencil, crayon, and, and stuff like that, because that's all I could afford. So, couldn't afford paints. So, I mean, the digital art is really democratized uh, uh, art in a way, because now even people who don't have, like, huge amounts of cash can experiment with, like, oil paints and all this sort of thing. So that's interesting for that. All right, there's her foot, so let's, and you'll note I'm sort of cutting some lines as well too. Cutting lines meaning like I am leaving a little bit of line width on it as well. I'm not going like right to her skin, for example. I'm sort of cutting, and what I'm doing here is I'm drawing the line 
carefully and using holding down the shift button to make a straight line. Make a straight line. Uh, what we got here? So that this under this fellow's mouth right here is the ledge of the car, like the the window. So let's zoom out. Okay, we're getting there. Keep going. And if you hear like really loud clackety clack, of course, obviously it's my keyboard. You should know that my keyboard is 13 years old, and it demands respect because it's lasted that long. And I mean. I had so many, on other programs I've used, I've had so many hotkeys, and I noticed that on other keyboards, certain keys are not in the same place. So it became quite a hassle. So as a result, I always, oops, I always stick, uh, stuck with this, uh, with this keyboard for that reason. So if you ever saw it, it's like all, it's like worn out. Like some keys are like much lower than others. Like I've actually worn out the plastic. That's pretty funny too. It's like when you have like a you know video game PS2 controller or whatever it is and you use it for an incredibly long time the texture is gone it just turns like into smooth like smooth plastic because you've worn the buttons down so much. So same thing so this 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 keyboard has been with me my whole career so it you know it's it's good for for that reason. It's proven itself. And go here like this. Uh, later on, if necessary, we'll adjust things according to the, um, you know, where uh, where these borders are. Let's turn on the borders and see how it goes. Uh, there's gonna be a few things we need to fix. So, you know, it's all it's all a process. You know, we have to start somewhere. And what else we got? Okay, this this last one up here. Save it. Save, save, save. And uh, what we'll do is we'll leave the border on so we don't make extra work for ourselves. And his hair goes like this. Alright, alt backspace. It's a great thing. And uh, I think I'll use polygon mask tool for this one. Get it real straight. Gotta be careful with the polygon mask tool. If you clickety click a little bit too fast, it'll close the mask on you. If you want to close it, manually without doing a clickety click double click type thing then what you can do is you can just hold control or hit control and click and then it'll close it from wherever you are so control done then erase it oh make sure oh see there's a mistake right there between the two um between the two mask tools, the lasso tool and the polygon tool, you can have it so that anti-aliasing is turned on or off. So be careful of that. So if you turn it off or turn it on on one or the other, make sure you do it on both if you want the same results. So I want the same results. So I undid the mask and went back and put it on anti alias. So that's nice and smooth. There we go. That's much better. Okay, almost done. We're almost done, guys. Not the picture. We're almost done the separation. Control, alt backspace, do 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 do, and then we got a seat here. Uh, how do we want to do that? We want to do that like this? Okay, we'll save that line. Do it like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably do those lines, you know, because I want, I don't want all of the, uh, I don't want the background lines to be as dark as the character lines, that's the technique I do, so that the background doesn't compete, the background doesn't compete with the foreground elements, foreground elements meaning, in this case, uh, our characters, we want our characters to have the darkest, crisp outlines so that they pop out against the uh, they pop out against the background Cause the thing is is like if you generally and it works in just about anything whenever you have a background always remember always remember it's a supporting element it's not the dominating element in most situations 
What that means is that you have to make sure that your stage is set to present your characters, whatever the character may be. So when you have a whole bunch of people in a crowd and then you want to specifically focus on one person, you know, then you're going to have to do some, make something more unique about that person, like they're looking at the camera or something like this. And similarly, like when they're in an environment, you have to make it so that the environment will allow you to, um, to stage that character in a way that they stand out from the background. So that while the environment is being set and established, at the same time, it's not fighting with the character for attention saying that you know the background is more important so you know the character can just you know you know back off and just just keep you know don't make too much noise no 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 it usually nine times out of ten it's it's all about the character and we're looking at the character so then you have to make sure your background uh, is like that so here we go There's a little bit more separation then we're almost done you know, do the mask, and if it's not right, then just go in and fix it up. It's a, it's a labor of love, or it's just a labor. Whatever it is, you have to do it. And a little bit of overspray there from the uh, marker. Marker. There's some over there too. Some on this guy here. So let's zoom out. What else we got? Oh, there's a there's a B pillar over here. That's got to go. And there we go. All right. Well, there you have it. Now, what we've done is we have separated the we separated the background from the character. So now we have the characters on a separate layer. So what we've done, just to recap, all I did is I just used white on a different layer. Excuse me, and then just. Uh, put over top here and just white it out whatever we needed to white out. So let's merge those together, shall we? We shall. So merge layers. You can do that just by right clicking the layer and that menu set will come up and then all within here are all your options. So now what we got is we got this. It looks nice, doesn't it? It's gorgeous. I love it. Uh, let's see. And you'll adjust things too, some things aren't right. So for example, I'm looking, at some, you know, the lines don't look that convincing, like they're not strong enough. It's too light, like there's a lot of gray here. So we want to change that. So what we can do is just uh, duplicate that layer and we can turn it to multiply. Let's have a look and see what happens. Oh, it looks a little bit too muddy. So let's reduce the opacity a little bit. Still a little bit of mess there, so what we'll do is we'll go to get rid of that. We'll go back here, go back to that original layer, and then what we'll do is we'll go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast, and keep the legacy on. What that does is it maintains where the the light and the dark is, so it's, it's it keeps it a little bit more pure. So what we'll do is we'll make it so that if we crank it all the way down and all the way up, it's still a little bit too muddy, so I'm just inch it down a little bit that way. There we go. So let's have a look. Zoom out. Let's look at it all over to see how it's okay. That's what it was before. That's what it is now. Before. Now. That's better. And. Alright. So some mess here and there. Clean it up. So, oh, that's on the copy. Okay. Clean it up. Okay. Clean it up on this layer too. Make sure it's good. Okay. Save it. Save. What we got there? 25 minutes. Okay, so it took us 25 minutes to separate that. I told you it's tedious, right? I did tell you guys that. Okay. So now, merge them again. So now what we got, so here's what we started with. 
And now here's what we got. Now we got these things here. So let's let's go to the next step. And the next step is something called flats. So flats, uh, what we'll do is we'll change it to an RGB and we're not going to merge it. We won't merge. So flats are simple enough that I can do them here to give you the basic idea, but uh, let's see, how do we go about getting them? Now, the thing is, is that yes, okay, we've got this thing separated now, and uh, what we're looking for now is gaps. So there are gaps in the line art. So what we'll do is we'll make a new layer, we'll pick black, and we're gonna go and close up all of these gaps here between the character and uh, any point on the panel. So we're going to fix those gaps. Some of them, most of them, if not all of them. And this is still under the the idea of the separations and making sure that it works. And we're doing this for the reason that when we're actually going to be uh, dropping our colors into this thing to separate it from the background, we want to make sure that it's it's a uh, you know hemetrically sealed. It's airtight, so that there's no things aren't going to escape anywhere. Like here, for example, when we do a mask, and you'll see what I'm saying. And and also just to make sure it's right, a few hatches there, and it looks like the hair we go here, and some hair here. You know, and there's another way you can do this too. Um, uh, the only reason I scanned it in this way where it's sort of a grayscale is because there was uh, marker there was marker uh, rendering within it so it required a grayscale. Other ways you could do it is that you could have it so that you scanned it in as a black and white file just a one bit image and then it would be razor sharp. But in this case that's not what I wanted and I actually don't mind the, uh, the little bit of dirt you know here and there because it adds to the character. But I will say that there are there are other ways of doing this, but this is the way I chose to do this one. I want to have it so that there's a little bit more feel to it. Ah, uh, there was something bothering me here. Yeah, this is a little bit too dark here. So fine tuning, fine, lots of fine tuning. You know, a lot of cleaning to make it right. And again, you know, it's like, yeah, I could do the backgrounds like all black and white, but the thing is, is that doing them this way, I'm enabled to have, you know, nice gradations and, you know, there's more texture, there's more feel to it. So that's the reason why. I wanted it to be drawn. I want it to feel drawn. I don't want it to feel like some sort of synthetic thing. So now what we're going to do, we're going to merge that together. So merge it. Merge those two layers. So now it's it's clean. We're pretty confident that all the holes are stitched up. Now what we're going to do is going to take our mask, hit anti-alias and contiguous. Contiguous, what contiguous does is contiguous makes it, and sample all layers as well too, what contiguous does is that it makes it so that it only masks the area that you click. If you click off contiguous, then what will happen is that it's going to mask every single place on the page it sees that is similar to the color you're masking. So for example, if I crank my tolerance up here too, I want to, like what I'm doing here is I'm masking all of the areas outside of the character, all the negative space. I want all the negative space here to be masked for good reason. What we're going to do now is we're going to do the basic separation of the characters and where we're going to drop our colors for the characters too. So what we're doing right now again is we're going in and get, making sure we got all of the negative space. Now once we have that mask, what we're going to do is we're going to put another layer underneath. We're going to change the layer that we just fixed with the characters to multiply. The other background will show through, so we'll turn that off. So right now we have a layer underneath the line art. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to select and go to contract, and we're going to contract this mask that we just did. Uh, we're going to contract it by 
one pixel, but hold on, I just see, I see two spots that I missed here, a few spots. Let me just do that. Just make sure I got everything before I do that. And am I 100% sure I got everything? Did I really get everything? Did I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we'll go back here and do it again. So we go select, modify, and then we go to contract. And then we want to contract this mask by one pixel. Oops, sorry, we have to invert the mask first. So that's control shift I to invert the selection. And then we go to select, and then modify, contract, one pixel. So now what's happened is that if you notice the line has sort of, uh, the mask line has sort of bit into the character lines. It's not flush like where the, it's like pretty much center of the line and that's useful to us. And here's why. So what I'll do is I'll take a really obvious color like red and we'll just go in. And this time I'm going to change my brush tool to a pencil tool so that it is anti-aliased. Uh, just so that it flows easier. So what I'm doing right now is I'm filling in the characters. And yes, I could go in and do a drop fill, but I'm just being a little bit more careful about it because I didn't I wasn't overly meticulous with my mask. So some of the things are it's still like overflowing a little bit. But you know, you don't have to be like militant about it by me. And this is only just so that you can you can have it uh, separated later. And then what later and then what we're gonna do is with this red layer I'm doing now, which is my base flats, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put all of the colors on there, which is <laughs> it's even more tedious than what we did. But I'll do that later. First, I'm just going to separate the characters. You know, we're just going to separate the characters. You don't have to worry about that until a little bit later on. So, let me just do this. Hold shift for those straight lines. Shift, there we go. Erase any overlap, if anything. <laughs> so, I do it red so that we can see exactly where it is. And here too, do it this way, this way, this way, and this way. So, again, you know, I know that the, you know, the crop lines for the panels are going to block off a lot of the overspray here. So, let's go in real quick, take care of that. Okay, so basically what we've done now, as we said we were going to, is separate the characters. And that took a grand total of one half an hour. So, and obviously I think you guys can tell that if there were more characters, it would take longer. If there are less characters, it would be shorter. So, we're almost done this part. This is one of the more tedious parts. Save it. Get rid of that mask and have a look. That's not bad. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do a little trick here. We're going to hold control and we're going to uh, we're going to click on the thumbnail. So what we've done now is we've gone in and we've masked what we just did. I'm going to take that lasso tool and make sure everything is good here take out some extra stuff if there's extra stuff. Okay, and we're going to do a little trick. Now, the thing is that, you know, we want some of these lines to be just a little, I want a nice, like, outline to this thing. So, there's a way that we can do that. So first, and this will be how we separate the lines, because right now, if you look at the lines, we still have this white background. Like, it's still on a white background. So how are we going to separate that, you know, and, uh, you know, keep these lines the way they are? Yes, you can float the line art. That's one method. But there's other benefits to doing it the way I'm showing you. So what we're going to do is 
we're going to take, we have the mask now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to select. We're going to expand this mask by just one pixel. One pixel. That's all we need. So now, underneath this layer, what we're going to do is we're going to take this layer and we're going to fill it in white. Okay, so it's white now. Underneath this layer, what we're going to do is, I mean, I suppose we can also do it another way. We could also do it that it's just an FX layer, but I'll do it this way just to keep it simple for now. So take G, drop fill, and fill in black. Now, if you notice what's happened, and just keep on filling it in, when I turn off the lines, oh, that's not the ex exact effect I'm looking for. I want it to be a little bit more than that. What I'll do, the idea is that I'm creating like a, a thicker, blacker outline. So, but what I'll do, just to make it a little bit more apparent, I'm gonna invert the mask, and I'm going to expand it correct and then on this on that white layer and I'm going to delete it so now we get a, a stronger black outline now what that does this black outline that we have here is that on the actual line art it gives us a stronger it gives us a stronger line in spots and we can adjust that like how however much we want it to, to go but basically uh, if you want it say for example here it will get rid of the mask you go on the white layer in other words this layer and what you do is that you just erase that white layer back a little bit and then you can sort of get you can you can fix like certain spots within it that are not uh, that are not right so for example I mean another way you can do it too is that you can go on your line art layer and um, sort of feather it out as well too. So what we're gonna do now is take all these things. We're gonna merge the black and white first. I'm gonna save it, I'll save it. So let's just look through it, make sure it's somewhat okay. And oh, maybe this is a little bit messy here. And uh, I'll clean up all this this mess later on. Most of it gets buried under the lines. Oh, that doesn't though. So what we'll do is we'll merge the that black layer and the white layer together. Merge the layers, and then we'll go in and with an eraser, just to make sure that you know we get rid of this as well too. Turn the eraser on to pencil so that we get like a really strong break in it so so now what I'm doing is just making sure that everything matches up reasonably well looks good right okay so take the line out so now what we do is we do this we hit control and then we go onto the line art layer what we'll do is we'll invert the mask so now that we're selecting all the area outside of the lines and we're going to expand the mask by one pixel so now it's sort of biting in and now what we're going to do is we'll go onto that line layer the line art layer and hit delete so now what's happened is that we have a thicker outline like a slightly thicker outline outside of it and we have floating line art just like that or floating like I mean the things are floating so we'll save it and then we can uh, go in and make sure everything we want to really be meticulous like clean stuff clean any overflow that we have here so and we can even do like a clipping mask as well too so that wherever we erase like the line art will automatically adjust so clip mask, what happens is that it'll only be visible depending on what's underneath it. Whatever object it is clipped to underneath, it'll only, or whatever layer it's clipped to underneath it is going to be how much it shows. So in other words, how I'm erasing 
the uh, that layer that we made in order to define the flats. If now I erase it, any line art now on top of it will also erase with it to make it nice and tidy. So like that. So it's a bit tedious, but I mean, you know, this is one way to do it. So there we go. So now, just like that, we have floating line art. So we're going to save it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll save a new version. It's always a good thing to do. So save up one. And then we merge these two together. And just like that, we have the characters separated. And this will help us tremendously for coloring. Because now what I can do is if I want, I can go on this layer. And here's the whole point is that if I want to, I can adjust the brightness contrast and it doesn't affect the characters. So this will, this is very, very, very helpful for us that you can, you know, have a lot of control and really make the characters pop out more. So see that? Look, if I make the background like, like more, uh, like a little bit lighter, look how much more the characters, uh, like pop out. So that's the whole point. That's why we did that. So now you know. So let's save it and we'll go to the next step. Now I have to stop the camera.